Hello and welcome to the Ed Hoddle Show presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm Greg Royce, joined by Stevenson football coach Ed Hoddle. Coach, uh, after your bye week last week, you went up to Lycoming and uh, picked up another road win. Uh, kind of got a little dicey there in the final few minutes, but uh, overall, you seemed like you played pretty well up there and just take us through the game. Uh, I, I think we played a solid football game. Um, you know, we were able to do some things offensively that were, were pretty exciting, um, generated, you know, turnover on special teams. Yeah. Um, you know, I think defensively they, they had a pretty good scheme for us and yeah. um, took us a while to get it adjusted. And it was something that, you know, continued to evolve to the closing minutes of the game. And, um, you know, fortunately for us, we were you know able to make enough plays to, to pull it out. Yeah. Yeah, one of the big plays that when you just kind of watch the time, it was kind of like, okay, it's kind of like a nice insurance touchdown, but uh, fourth and goal in the 28. Mm -hmm. And uh guy in the end zone for Lycoming tips the pass, and uh, Ryan Stengel was able to come down with it. Sure. Obviously, proved to be the difference in the game. Obviously, a huge play, especially, you know, facing such a long field. Absolutely. It was, um, you know, I was asked post game, you know, well, how, how much does luck come into play? Well, lucky in one sense but we work that all the time in practice right. the, you know the, the tip ball drill so you know and ryan being disciplined enough to, to 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 stay in the play and be able to complete the play so you know a little bit of luck maybe but yeah. a little bit of preparation as well um you know it's certainly fun fun to see those kind of plays you know fall in your favor yeah and again just talking about the offense and the passing now uh, you know Ty Crab had a good day, you know, three touchdown passes, ran for another one, and as a conference offensive player of the week, it's fun to just be able to watch him to continue to mature and develop. Well, it is, and 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 he's taken that responsibility, you know, with, 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 you know, with a great deal of uh, tenacity. But I think before you talk about Ty's performance, the running back's performance, I think you got to look at what the offensive line's Absolutely. been able to do. You know, really coming into their own, really starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Um, you look at the rushing yards on Saturday. You you know, you add back in um, the lost yardage on sacks right. and you add back in a, a negative 28 yard run yeah, to take the safety the at the yep. end of the game. And, you know, we're up near that 250 mark, mm -hmm. you know, on the ground against um, against pretty good defense. So I think before you look at those guys, you've got to really look at the, the, the five guys up front and the job yeah, that they're currently doing. Um, and I think, too, I think you, you've got to look at. You know what what Coach Beard has done. You know developmentally with the offensive line, Coach Larson developmentally. You know and coaching tie up and yeah. you know it, it, it's it's really a, an all in. Uh, it's on us. You, yeah. you know it's not on the players, it's not on the coaches. It's again, it's that team. You know that team yeah. environment that we've got this year that's really exciting to watch. Yeah, certainly. You look at any good football team. Obviously, it always starts on both lines, offensive and defensive line. That's Absolutely. where a lot of football games are won. Um, uh, with the win, um, you wrap up. You know you're going to be playing after this week. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of scenarios that still need to play out, but uh, you're home this week against FDU Florham, uh, final regular season game. Um, just talk about uh, what you need to do to kind of keep the momentum that you have going and uh, going to the postseason on a high note. For us, it's it, you know it, it's playing the best football game of the year. You know, it, it's week eleven. It's our tenth ball game. You know, the responsibility falls on us as coaches and, and the guys as players to to go out and be the best football team that we can be, and and, and you know really look to peak on Saturday. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at FDU. You know, they're six and three. It's one of the best season they've had in yeah. twenty some years, and um, they're playing for a lot as well. You, right. you know, they've got an opportunity at some postseason. Um, some postseason games and, and, and an opportunity to, you know, kind of change history a little bit and mm -hmm. change the trajectory of their program. Right. So, you know, I, I would anticipate them coming in fired up, ready to go. I would anticipate, a, you know, a good hard fought football game. Yeah. And then uh, obviously senior day on Saturday. Um, just talk about what this senior class has kind of meant to the program in terms of, you know, leadership and stability, just overall what they've meant. Well, you, you look at this, this particular group and um, it's a group that's really taken ownership of, of, of the program. It's, you know, they're all strong leaders. They're all vocal leaders. They're all really good guys in the classroom and, and just good people. Yeah. Um, and I think for us, you know, having an opportunity to put them in the postseason for the fourth straight year is, is, is an awesome opportunity for them. And um, just a really, really solid group of guys. And I think you look at you know, you look at the size of the class. We're gonna, you know, we're we're, we're gonna celebrate 23 guys right. on, on Saturday afternoon, and you know that's a, that's a pretty good number for Division three football to yeah. have 23 seniors. And um, I, I think our performance this year is a direct reflection of the work that they did in the off season. It's a direct reflection of their character and their leadership and the kind of the imprint that they wanted to leave on the program. So I, you know, I'm, it'll be a bittersweet day. Yeah. Um, fortunately for us, you know, we do have an opportunity to play again next week and. 
um, you know, we'll enjoy the time with those guys because it's never it's never quite the same when you don't see them every day. And, right. Um, you know, I, I won't be looking forward to the start of spring ball because many of those faces won't won't be there. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's always a bit of a that's when the shock really happens. You know, when you go out there and you don't see Brennan Flaherty, and you go out there and you don't see Ashton Leskey and yeah. Peyton LaPere and you know those guys, and you know that they're they're not gonna they're not gonna come running out of the out of the <laughs> locker room two minutes late. So, um, you know, that's when it really hits me is kind of when we hit hit the next cycle in the springtime. But um, you know, they mean a, they mean a great deal, and I think their legacy of what they're leaving behind is going to be remembered as a significant one. Yeah, certainly, certainly, like you said, a very special class, and uh, look forward to honoring them on Saturday. All right, Coach, um, best of luck this Saturday, and we'll chat next week. Thanks, Greg. All right, for Ed Hoddle, I'm Greg Royce. This has been the Ed Hoddle Show.